Good morning friends it's a beautiful morning and we are beginning our morning tales for today that is September 7 with a breakthrough news that the Standard Chartered Bank has launched a credit card which will cost you rupees 49 per month and it will give you a plenty of discount offers at Myntra, Grofers, Yatra, Zomato, Ola and Ionex so if you are a really shopaholic or frenzy about shopping then you can use this card in order to fulfill your crave for the uh, shopping now after that good news let me begin my current affairs lecture for today with this first question so the first question is quite interesting as well as important so do listen to it very carefully india has provided a special line of credit worth dash to russia in the fifth edition of eastern economic forum so this is quite an important forum which has recently taken place in russia itself so india has decided to provide a dollar 1 billion line of credit to russia in order to develop the resource rich region of russia so that is the first breakthrough news now the second important news is that prime minister narendra modi has unveiled a new kind of policy that is act far east so those who are following the current affairs diligently would know that this resounds something so this policy is an extension or is on the similar lines of act east policy so in order to increase india's engagement with russia this act far east policy has been launched by narendra modi now apart from this in this forum india has signed around 50 agreements with russia which are worth 5 billion so a total number of 50 agreements on coal hydrocarbon exploration as well as maritime communication have been signed at this forum a quite important agreement in out of these 50 agreement was the signing of maritime communication agreement to open the channel between chennai and vladivostok now the other important fact that india and russia both have committed to increase their bilateral trade to dollar 30 billion and this was not a new development which has taken place at this forum we have already discussed that thing earlier also in our morning tales that india and russia are planning to increase their bilateral trade to 30 billion by the year 2025 so this is the target now apart from this russia has also offered the joint design to india to develop the conventional submarines so basically there is one agreement in which conventional submarines will be built by russia for indian navy through an intergovernmental agreement and in this intergovernmental agreement it has been decided that full access to technology and intellectual property rights will also be provided to india so that was all about this question now let's move on to the next question that is where was the first ever national conference on cyber crime investigation and forensic organized so this is quite important friends why because first of all this is the first ever national conference and secondly in this first ever conference the minister of state for the ministry of development of north eastern region so jitendra singh announced that india will set up a centralized technology vertical which will be operationalized by the next year and it will function under cbi now what is the purpose of it so this centralized technology vertical will help cbi to connect investigators from across the country for information sharing among them on a real time basis so basically the main aim behind setting up this centralized technology vertical is to counter the cyber crime now coming back to our question so the answer to this question is option a delhi this conference was held in delhi next question quite important question do listen to it very carefully so by which year will the who's regional committee for south east asia region eliminate the measles and rubella from the region so recently uh, the 72nd session of regional committee was held in new delhi and in this session a new resolution has been adopted by the members of this committee and in this resolution all the members have decided to eliminate the diseases of measles and rubella from the region by the year 2023 so this is the target year by which both the diseases will be eliminated from southeast asia 
Now, uh, a little more factual da data here. So, measles causes around 5 lakh deaths in the Southeast Asian region annually, while the rubella or congenital rubella syndrome inflicts about 55,000 children in the region. So, this is the factual data. Now, the question here arises is that do we have any nations in Southeast Asia who have already eliminated these diseases? So, yes, the answer to this question is yes. We have countries in the Southeast Asia region who have eliminated measles and rubella. So, if you remember, so recently WHO has declared Sri Lanka as measles free and we had also discussed it in our previous videos. So, Sri Lanka, then Bhutan, North Korea, Maldives and Timor Leste are the countries who have eliminated measles from their land. Now, which countries have eliminated rubella? So, the name of the countries are Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Maldives, Nepal and Timor Leste. So, these are the six countries which have already eliminated rubella or CRS that is congenital rubella syndrome. Now, I have one question for you guys also. So, can you tell me that who is the director of this regional committee? Do mention your answers in the comment section below that who is the director of this regional committee. Now, the next question is, which Indian state has signed a sister state agreement with Delaware state of America? So, let me first show you where this Delaware is. So, this is the red spot and this is the Delaware city. So, Recently, uh, the state of Gujarat has signed a sister state agreement with Delaware to strengthen their mutual ties. Now, what is this sister state agreement? So, this sister state agreement or twin town agreement is an agreement in which two states of different countries come together to increase their cultural and economic ties. So, that is why it has been named as sister states agreement. Not very hard to remember this thing. And now, let's move on to the next question. With which nation has India recently signed the Mutual Legal Assistance in Criminal Matters Treaty? So, this is quite important treaty. Now, India has signed this treaty with Maldives. So, as the name itself is suggesting that the treaty aims to increase the mutual legal assistance in criminal matters. So, basically, in order to carry out the legal prosecution and investigation effectively, this treaty has been signed. Now, there is one other information also which I want to tell you. So, the information is that the fourth edition of the Indian Ocean Conference was also held in Maldives. So, this is an important conference and the theme of this conference is securing the Indian Ocean region traditional and non-traditional challenges. So, this was the theme. Not very hard to remember. The question for you is that what is the currency of Maldives and what is the capital of Maldives? That you have to tell me in the comment section below. So do you know that which city is the most favorable tourist place? So, let us know through this World Travel and Tourism Competitive Index. So, this index is released by World Economic Forum and it has ranked Spain at the top position in this competitiveness index. Now, a total of 140 countries were measured in this index and these are the four broad categories under which these 140 countries were assessed. So, first is the enabling environment, second is travel and tourism policy and enabling conditions, third is infrastructure and fourth is natural and uh, cultural resources. So, these are the four broad parameters on which these 140 countries were assessed. Now, India is ranked at 34th position and this is an upward movement from its last position which was 40th in the index. So, basically this index is a biennial index which is released once in two years. Now, which country is the last? So, it is Yemen. So, our next question is, which company has signed the co-origination agreement with SBI to increase credit lending to MSME? So, basically, what is this co-origination agreement? Let me first discuss this. In the year 2018, RBI has launched its progressive co-origination policy. Now, this policy allows banks to collaborate with NBFCs in order to increase their lending to MSMEs as well as other enterprises. So, this co-origination policy is quite important. 
now coming back to our question so which company has signed the co origination agreement with sbi so it is esl finance limited this is an nbfc and it is a subsidiary of idelwest financial services limited now i have a question for you that you have to tell me so do tell me that who is the chairman of esl finance limited and let's move on to the next question of today that is how many institutes have been recently granted the tag of institute of eminence by government so this institute of eminence tag is very important in the year 2017 ugc had started an exercise of selecting 10 public sector universities and 10 private universities and Uh, UGC would grant the Institute of Eminence tag to selected universities. Now, what is the purpose of providing this tag? This tag would mean that the universities have been given a free hand or the autonomy to convert uh, themselves into the world class institute by engaging in tie ups with foreign institutes and academia. Now, the public sector universities will get around one thousand crore funding. from the government but that is uh, only limited to the public sector universities so that was all about the history of this tag now let's discuss the present status so presently ugc had selected around 30 universities 15 from private 15 from public and this 30 universities list was shortened by government to 20 so now we have 20 recommended universities out of which recently five universities have got the tag now which five universities are these these universities are iit kharagpur iit madras delhi university university of hyderabad and banaras hindu university so these are the five universities which have already got the institute of eminence tag very recently so now it means that all these universities can affiliate with foreign investors and foreign academia to convert themselves into the world class institutes the last question of the day is when was uk sina committee formed now let me tell you the purpose of this committee so this committee was formed by rbi to review the msme sector in india and to suggest ways to strengthen this sector so in the month of june the uk sina committee had submitted a quite long list of recommendations for the msme sector out of which one recommendation was very important and that was to set up a distress asset fund with a corpus of rupees 5000 crores so this fund is aimed at helping msmes who are not doing that much good in terms of earning profits apart from this a host of other recommendations has been covered in the spotlight of june itself which you can download from our website the link of the spotlight is given in the description box below so do not forget to download the spotlight and read all the recommendations from there and if you find any kind of trouble then you can inform me through youtube or so do not forget to tell me the answer to this question that when was this uk sina committee formed now it's time to conclude our morning tales for today thank you so much friends for watching our video and if you have gained anything from the video so do not forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for all the latest notifications thank you